What is it called? Your Detective here investigating your favorite albums and today I'm going to be doing an album review on the new Matana Roberts album, Coin Coin, this phone is falling, okay. The new Matana Roberts album, Coin Coin Chapter 5, In the Garden. So uh, it's not pronounced Quang Quang, like the French onomatopoeia for duck. Uh, for for duck quacks. No, it's actually coin coin not quang quang and I know that thanks to Matana Roberts herself commenting on my review on her last album and it's actually I think one of the first times an artist I reviewed commented on my YouTube video which is kind of a big deal so thank you for correcting me I guess. Um, but anyways, Coin Coin Chapter 5 is the fifth installment in her Coin Coin series. It is a series of avant-garde jazz albums with spoken word on top. And avant-garde jazz is not something I cover on this channel a lot. In fact, I don't think I covered this album at all outside of... Uh, covered the genre at all outside of Matana Roberts. Certainly, I'm not super familiar with the genre as well. So certainly, this also isn't the kind of genre of music that I would just randomly get into and just super duper enjoy. But what I really like about Matana Roberts music is, uh, aside from the very interesting sounding avant-garde jazz, she also provides a lot of good storytelling. Uh, she started the series in the year 2011. She started the series in the year 2011 and then about four years ago she released chapter four which again has the frantic vibrant jazz on top of some poetic surreal spoken word and uh now we have chapter five where we again explore a slightly different story that revolve around similar struggles and it's really interesting to see how the concept comes together in terms of storytelling and it's one uh i i don't want to say cinematic experience it's more of a theatrical experience i feel like i watched a play by listening to this album so the album starts off with we said with the clanging chives and sounds of seagulls unsettling strings faint rambles it sort of builds up to some driving drums and i thought it's going to build up to something huge or a beat drop or something but it doesn't it just sort of hard cuts to the next track different rings which again features these faint rambles we don't really know what's going on but we get these sporadic saxophones and horns and pianos they blast around and it is one tone setter one hell of a tone setter but also it it basically sets the stage for what's about to come which is the track unbeknownst which is the first track where we actually get some story and the lyrics remain sort of ambiguous but i really love the themes of spirituality she doesn't touch a lot on spirituality here but you can tell there's a huge presence of christianity in these lyrics which really characterizes the african-american community of the early 20th century which this album is actually based in so that's really cool i love the building strings and drums as well predestined confessions has a bed of fluttery hi-hats trilling sax and horns and it's both calming and unsettling and strange at the same time and then we have how prophetic also you need to realize that all the track titles on this album sort of come together and form one big poem but anyways predestined confessions how prophetic uh, a caged dance i have long been fascinated uh how prophetic is a real party popper with steady drums and it, with a real groove as well and lyrically it is about a maybe a failing relationship relationship or a failing marriage and from what i can tell from the song at first i thought maybe she's telling a story from the 19th century or something it just has that really old uh literal and, and by literal i mean like literature quality to it which i really really like but again we have the refrains my name is your name our name is their name uh it took me a while to sort of figure out what's going on but my name is your name our name is their name is basically what happens in a family when everyone shares the same last name so this is very much about that i think
anyways. Maybe there's more of a double meaning to it. I wouldn't be surprised. A caged dance is a six minute long saxophone solo that sort of transitions to I have long been fascinated where the sax breaks down into a bunch of strings and horns. It feels like they've totally lost control. It smoothly transitions to some really nice and clean singing and then entering the next part of the story enthralled not by her curious blend where the spoken word continues to have swelling keys and buzzing noises. She talks about how she missed out on his boys growing up and and how it's it's given her a lot of pressure. She's be, she's beginning to question herself as well. And again, that is followed with another piece of avant-garde track. This time it's much more stringed back, much more straightforward, kind of like an interlude, and the track is called No Way Chastened. But I never heard a sound so long. The next track is uh, perhaps a highlight on the album for me because this track is essentially a spiritual, it's a lullaby in the spirit uh, in the style of a spiritual and it's easily uh, some of my favorite moments on the album because it's so dramatic so solemn uh, in some ways very melancholic and i can pretty much say the same for the next track the promise which is pretty much a three minute extension of the previous track which is only one and a half minutes long it's nothing but vocal harmonies but this time it's a lot more angelic then we have Shake My Bones, where the album enters a jazzier direction with a real groove. And again, this goes the same for the entirety of the album. I really like the production. I feel like it's a, like a live recording or something. I feel like there's a band playing in front of me. So it's very, very organic and rustic. Away is not an option. It is the climax of the story where the main character got pregnant and it created a storm of drama. The main character's husband, uh, instead of being happy, started to question her uh, for cheating, which uh, again, put a lot of pressure on her. And it just goes to show how tough it must have been for uh, a woman, uh, for an African American woman to be a mother, especially in the 1920s. On this track, the album finally reveals itself that this is set in 1925. And we have speedy horns and drums that add to the tension and some tribal percussion at the end, which prolonged into For They Do Not Know, which is easily the longest track on the album. It's nearly seven minutes long with all sorts of textured percussion, chimes and keys, which dissolves into refrains where it sounds like the main character has lost her mind. My name is your name. My name is your name. Their name is our name. Their name is our name. And it sort of repeats itself again and again and again for a couple minutes. Others Each is another avant-garde interlude and the album ending, Ain't I, Your Mystery is Our History, um, sort of loops back to the intro track with whistles and driving drums. We have Spanish and English reiterations of some of the bits of this album's lyrics. I wish there's more of an ending to the album. Uh, I guess the ending is the main character uh, went to the doctor for help but instead of helping her the doctor condemns her even further and it sort of pushed her to insanity um but i wish there's more of an uh, more of an ending to this story but overall it's still really interesting not only for the uh, jazzy elements but also for the spoken word and the story and the way the story is laid out and chopped up and sort of scattered across this album and how all the track titles form a poem that reflects on the story. So yeah, another really good album from Matana Roberts. I still prefer chapter four a little bit over this one, but I think this is really good as well. I'm feeling a light to decent eight out of 10. So have you listened to the new album from Matana Roberts? Comments below, let me know, subscribe if you want more and thanks for watching.